Um, so uh, we welcome our next uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Adil Khan. Dr. Adil, are you here? Can you see me? Hi. Hello. Can you see my presentation? Hello, Dr. Adil. Um, Hi, hello. Yeah, the presentation is coming now. Okay. So, um, so our next uh, speaker for uh, this uh, session, uh, Dr. Adil Khan, uh, he will deliver a talk of point of care testing and the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Adil Khan, a PhD, is an associate professor of pathology at the Louise Katz School of Medicine, Temple University in Philadelphia, and the director for point of care testing and clinical chemistry for the Temple University Health System. He completed his master's from the United Kingdom in immunology of infectious diseases from the School of London, uh, sorry, for the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine 1992 and his PhD in immunology from the Hammersmith Hospital campus of the National Heart and Lung Institute, Imperial College London in 2000. Uh, Dr. Khan uh, then pursued a postdoctoral research fellowship at the University of Calgary in Canada, followed by a postdoctoral clinical chemistry training fellowship at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center at Dallas. Dr. Khan research interest, including identifying novel markers of inflammation on the clinical side, as well as providing expert consultation to his colleagues. His interest in the clinical trials of point of care testing devices, laboratory instruments, and assay development. He is a national and international speaker, has numerous of publications, and co authored. Uh, various laboratory guidelines for the Clinical Laboratory Standards Institute organized many, uh, so many workshops and, sy and symposia. He has also been treasurer and past chair of the Philadelphia section of the American Association of Clinical Chemistry and is currently the chair of International Federation of Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory Medicine Executive Board Committee on Point of Care Testing. Welcome, Dr. Ha uh, Dr. Khan, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, uh, speak. Um, so my title will be uh, Point of Care Can you raise uh, the voice, please, uh, from the mic? Sure. Um, can you hear me now? Is it the same? Um, Yes. I I can't hear you, Dr. Adil. Yeah. No. Yes. You, you can yes, hear me? Yes, clear. Good, fantastic. Okay, so uh, first of all... Yes, clear. Okay, good. Um, th thank you very much for your kind introduction, and uh, thank you for uh, uh, in inviting me to speak at your conference. So my talk will be essentially on when care testing and its... Um, um, relationship to the COVID-19 pandemic. So first of all, there's certain objectives. Um, at the end of the lecture, you will be able to understand the role of point of care testing in uh, public health, understand small world, uh, small world networks in, in relation to healthcare services, and have some understanding on how future uh, infectious disease outbreaks can be prevented. 
So first of all, the COVID-19 pandemic um, it's caused a uh, huge uh, e economic uh, loss and human loss. There's something like uh, 64 million um, coronavirus cases and uh, there's something like 1.5 million uh, deaths. So it's huge, uh, huge uh, burden on society. And if you look at the, the COVID-19 um, disease, it affects social in interactions. And um, when and humans are very social beings, so when our social interactions are affected, uh, there's our, our whole fabric of society is affected. It affects uh, the way universities are run, schools are done, uh, affects religious centers, um, shopping, restaurants, museums, tourism, amusement parks, conferences, um, the business aspect as well as the scientific aspect. So there's a huge uh, economic loss. So, um, and it's, it's, it's something which uh, people were, it's something which people were un, 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 unprepared for. Um, so there's a saying, fool me once, shame on you. F fool me twice, shame on me. And if you look, look over the last uh, 20 years, we've actually had a number of epidemics and pandemics. And regardless of that, there were a number of publications in which we were told, this one came out in 2006, that uh, new demics, which involves infectious disease uh, um, of uh, epidemics and pandemics, we, we were told that if strong medical and economic penalties are to be avoided, we need to be aware. We also, this came out in 2015 when uh, the Ebola uh, crisis was occurring. Again, we were told that infectious disease outbreaks should not be underestimated because they wreak havoc on healthcare systems and entire economies. And yet, still, we were caught, uh, you know, unprepared. So this is a schematic which shows how um, um, coronavirus. Um, epidemic spread out to become a pandemic. And as we come into December, it's been about a year since we've had, um, since this has been in the news. And over the last year, we've learned a huge amount uh, from this uh, uh, virus and from uh, um, the effects that it's, it's caused. But the question now is that, um, are we going to make any changes to our, you know, is, is there going to be any sustained changes? So what are our plans for the future? Because we will, we will be having emergency crisis uh, in the future. Um, there's going to be infectious diseases. There will be natural and man-made disasters as well. So we need to basically think broadly on what needs to be implemented so that uh, nations on a global perspective are much more better prepared. So there are a number of ways that this can be uh, tackled. But uh, in, in my talk, the, 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 there will be three plans of actions. Well, the first one is make public health colleges actively incorporate point of care testing and its role in crisis management into the curriculum. The second I will talk about will be optimize point of care testing in small world networks. And the third uh, is investing in point of care testing, research and development training. So when we talk about the first point, um, point of care testing in public health colleges. Now, why is this important? Well, public health uh, is defined as the art and science of preventing disease, prolonging life and promoting health through organized of society. And public health practitioners, they promote healthy lifestyles that prevent the spread of disease. Point of care testing by definition is medical testing at the point of care so that rapid decisions can be made 
and from those decisions you can improve patient management. So naturally, you, you would think that point of care testing is, is going to be an important part of any public health school curriculum. However, recently, um, uh, Jerry Coast, who's a good colleague of mine, he, uh, he him and his group, they did a study in which they looked at 72 um, public health um, programs and schools in the United States to see how much they taught point of care testing in the curriculum. Interestingly, they found that none of the schools or colleges um, actually systematically taught point of care testing. No, not only that, the US accreditation agencies that certify educational content, um, they didn't encourage it. Um, it wasn't something which was in their uh, view. Um, even in epidemi epidemiology and emergency preparedness courses, um, only about two course descriptions mentioned point of care testing, but uh, training was not part of the learning objectives. They did find certain catalogs which described limited laboratory training, um, mainly in bench microbiology, that's um, suitable for reference laboratories. Community-based public health appeared in several curricula without really describing the roles of home, home testing and, and how that can be beneficial. Now that we have Ebola and we've got other infectious diseases, you would have thought that something would be um, present in their curriculum. Uh, however, there was nothing on the requirement or, or implementation of an isolation laboratory for these highly infectious diseases. Nothing on instrumentation, design, how it should be operated, the workflow, personnel, training, and, and quality assurance. Community-based public health, it, it, it appeared in several uh, curricula, but it didn't really describe the roles of home testing. There was nothing on dis disaster medical assistance teams, you know, what type of instrumentation they should use, you know, the, the organization and so on. So that's very surprising. So uh, public health professionals, they need to be aware of the benefits and limitations of point of care testing technologies and their roles in crisis management. It's essential, it's vital for their, the, the success of their roles in, 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 in healthcare. Um, because public health practitioners, they're the people who will be making future policies on crisis management disaster management and how infectious disease uh, epidemics, pandemics, they should be controlled and, and organized. So they're at the forefront of policy making. So they should be, so point of care testing should be a very integral part of their curriculum because it Im improves patient care. They, they should know the limitations of point of care testing technology um, inside the hospital, outside the hospital the types of um, devices that are av available to the consumer and the limitations so that interpretations can be done correctly. Uh, pu public health practitioners, they're educators. They develop public health policy. And they should be aware of all the, the validation policies that's involved in getting a point of care test um, into uh, the, the public arena. So, if uh, if so, what type of curriculum uh, should they be? What type of point of care curriculum should they have uh, in their uh, colleges? Well, first of all, it should provide them with a good understanding of the processes that are involved in implementing point of care testing. They should also understand point of care uh, technologies and re re relies the limitations so that correct interpretation of test results can be made. And they should also be um, illustrated with real world case studies of, of how uh, point of care testing has uh, improved uh, crisis management. So the first part of any curriculum should have something on the fundamental principles and practice of point of care testing. So they should be 
the, the definition of point of care testing, understanding the, um, the objective of point of care testing for rapid and, and effective evidence-based decision making, uh, introduce situations where point of care testing has proven uh, benefits for public health, uh, know that generation of fast results will be able to help triage patients so that they can um, um, so healthcare can be done efficiently um, with good medical outcomes. The second part should be on a needs assessment um, to, to develop a business plan. Um, you should all also be available to the different um, instrument formats, how they can be selected, the validation process, um, something on quality assurance. Uh, quality control and proficiency testing, also known as external quality assessment. And there should be, uh, depending on um, the area of the world they are, they should be aware of the regulations that are involved. So um, we've all come across point of care tests. So these are the usual, uh, the lateral flow tests. These are. Uh, Hemocult, this is uh, urinalysis, sticks, um, glucose meters, blood gas instruments, and ISAT, which can be used with different cartridges. Um, and, uh, give a, a wide variety of results. Here's, here's another uh, slide just showing you the enormous different types of point of care devices that are uh, available now. It's, it's a hugely uh, expanding field. There's a huge number of tests that are available um, that can be. So, public health professionals they, they should be uh, they they should have good knowledge on this. And then they should also be um, aware of um, the design criteria. Uh, the World Health Organization has this uh, acronym called Assure. First of all, they should be affordable, um, sensitive, specific, user-friendly. They should you should be able to use them with very minimal training. They should be uh, rapid. Ideally, results should be available within 30 minutes uh, in an ideal instrument. They should be robust so that the reagents aren't um, temperature sensitive, so they can be stored at room temperature. They should have stability. Equipment free. They, they should not be involving lots of different instruments that need to be all get connected. They should be very uh, easy to handle and it should all be self-contained and deliverable to the people that need it. The third part of any curriculum should be making them aware of the roles of point of care coordinators. Uh, these are basically the the glue that holds any point of care service together. Uh, without point of care coordinators, no point of care testing program can exist. Um, should, they should also be have some knowledge on using point of care testing for monitoring and detecting chronic and, um, diseases, acute diseases, uh, and infectious. And this should be. Um, integrated with the case studies and research studies. Then there should be um, some topics on geospatial science and how that can be uh, exploited in outbreaks and emergency uh, preparedness. And I'll come back to this again as one of the second points, uh, the small world networks and how uh, this can be integrated with geospatial science and point of care testing. Um, there should be some discussions on personal protective equipment, um, fire safety requirements, uh, isolation and laboratory requirements. And then that should be uh, integrated with case studies, outbreaks, uh, disasters, how, how um, solely um, point of care testing, geospatial science has been integrated to uh, manage these outbreaks and disasters. So the second point, so 
that curriculum is very important for any public health um, college or program. The second point um, to help plan for future outbreaks is to uh, optimize point of care testing in small world networks. So essentially, we need to improve the delivery of healthcare, especially in rural and resource limited networks. So one way to do that is to identify what is known as small world networks. Um, you have to build healthcare pathways in these small world networks and then use what is known as ge geospatial information uh, systems to improve uh, efficiency, healthcare efficiency during crisis. So these uh, geographical information systems, they allow people to look for trends, patterns, and relationships uh, between locations, uh, different locations uh, on Earth. Um, so by doing that, you can improve efficiency, communication, decision making in a number of areas. So th they've been used before. They've been used in uh, looking at ways to improve efficiencies in national defense, ecology, social sciences, and in public health. And there are some examples. Uh, they've been used previously to monitor cholera outbreaks, uh, also to monitor HIV AIDS epidemics in South Africa, and effectively allocate treatment and resources. They've also been used to identify potential hazards during uh, uh, crisis by looking at the road networks, population densities, and geography. So when we talk about small world networks, we basically are talking about a hub um, which is well connected. Um, by roads, by social networks. So analysis of a small world network enables you to identify these hubs, uh, know where they are, and work out where the hospital is, where the diagnostic center is. You can map the distance between the healthcare uh, and population centers. And you can also identify um, areas that can get isolated during an emergency or a disaster. So geographic information systems can then be used to position point of care testing in these small world networks such that uh, accessibility is improved uh, so that uh, testing can occur efficiently, which can lead to much better medical outcomes. And I'll give you some illustrations later on. So some of the information that is required is, first of all, you, you need to be aware of uh, the topography, uh, the regional ge geography, the roads, where the hospitals are, healthcare facilities are, how many beds, physicians, pharmacists, the availability of medical technologies. Um, you need to have information on population statistics, um, ratios of poor to, to total people ratios. The distances um, um, between the population centers and the different health centers and the diagnostic centers. So this would be an example of uh, setup before you look at it using the geographic information systems. So usually you would have population centers and they would go to the hospital, which would also have the diagnostic center. So everything would be all in the same place. So the diagnostic center and the place where the patient is treated would be more or less in, in the same place. However, when you start integrating it with geographic information systems and finding which would be more efficient, you can actually have a point of care test diagnostic center somewhere in a central location where Depending on the diagnosis, you can either send them to this hospital or they can go to another hospital. So efficiency is uh, so you um, 
So basically, to make the whole system much more efficient. So this would be a case where people who live in these areas would have to go to this area or to this area. But by having um, a point and care center here, you, you would improve efficiency. If people can go from here, inst instead of people going from here to there, they, they can go from there to there. And if there's a, 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 a disaster, if there's a certain area which is um, made inactive, um, there's that communication available. There's that healthcare pathway which becomes available. So there's there's more efficiency in the entire system. So this needs to be part of the curriculum as well, but it's 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 uh, employing uh, ge geographic information systems to make um, crisis management much more efficient. So as as a result, point of care testing uh, helps in the optimization of uh, the small world network and the device operators that become very efficient in QA practices and in using the point of care technologies. And when um, crises occur, it can just step up and deal with uh, the crisis. Also, uh, by having this, um, by, by making point of care testing uh, very much part of the culture, um, point of care testing can also start occurring upstream. Uh, to prevent uh, outbreaks, um, Dr. Khan, two ideally should be, uh, should be supported so that it can be done. Can be done. Okay, can be done in uh, the patient home. So if you look at um, Ebola and and and, and COVID nineteen, um, the presentation of febrile patients at diagnostic centres. Uh, is too late. If they can be tested at home and, then, and they can stop um, moving into the environment because they know they're infected, that would uh, uh, be better outcomes and would, uh, would better contain them. So we need to invest in point of care testing, so it involves research and development and, and training. So we've already started doing a lot of research and development. Uh, we've developed a better nucleic acid uh, test, uh, the combo test, which can test for uh, a number of viruses at the, the same time. Uh, I, I, my suggestion would be to have a global uh, super fund so that um, the financial burdens of uh, um, 20-case countries can be um, shared. Uh, and there should be point of care coordinate involvement in managing point of care testing. And as uh, my previous talk that also mentioned the important role of point of care testing uh, and the point of care coordinator, so I'm just going to briefly go over it. But um, Time is there needs to be an understanding that uh, their role is vital for the success. Okay. Okay, so it's important to have the point of care coordinator because they will be uh, frequently meeting um, people and making sure that um, quality is maintained. They do the compliance review and uh, it's important as a final thought for point of care testing, it needs to be embraced as an important tool in empowering the public to self-manage diseases. In, in coordination with uh, the healthcare practitioner and authority service team. Thank you very much. Thank so you very, very much, Dr. Shine.